What's going on everybody? Broken Games HDR back at it again with another video. I'm trying to see if I actually remember how to do this and make videos because it's been like three weeks, almost a month since I made a video. I've only been doing the podcast only because to me, like in the last month, there's been nothing really interesting to to make a video about, right? Nothing really worth making a video about. Plenty of stuff to talk about during the podcast, but a dedicated video, nah, not really. But this morning and last night, um, got some things that I wanted to make two videos on. The first is this video, these, this new PlayStation hardware. And last night was Gamescom opening night live. Um, so I'm going to do a different video on that. I was going to live stream that event, but I wasn't home. So I'll just do a separate review on it. So PlayStation um, has announced, well, this is, this is not the first announcement of this hardware. We've known about this hardware but we've gotten some new details and confirmations and like names, the actual names of the devices, the prices. Um, I think there was like a release window in there somewhere. Um, so yeah, PlayStation has announced the PlayStation Portable, uh, excuse me, the PlayStation Portal remote player, uh, the PlayStation Pulse Explorer wireless earbuds, and the PlayStation Pulse Elite wireless headset. So let me just switch over yeah, let's talk about the uh, the PlayStation Portal, formerly known as Project Q. So I like the name of it, right? Because it 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 literally tells you what this device is by the name. This device is a conduit, right? It's not a device, uh, a dedicated handheld device. It's not, um, you know, like a native uh, handheld handheld device in any way. It's literally that a portal, a pathway, an avenue to play games, an alternate path to play games. It's not uh, about, you know, it, nothing on this device um, is its own experience. It's all just literally a portal uh, from the PlayStation 5. So I think that's a, I think that's a good name. Um, it's, so it's a remote play device. It's gonna be $200. I'm not the best person to really evaluate what's a good, a good price for like, remote play devices or handheld devices in general because I'm not a handheld person and I'm going to get into that. Um, but I don't want to hear anybody say nobody is going to buy this. I'm not paying attention to, you know, anybody on the internet, especially Twitter. Twitter is just the, the, the place where people a exaggerate and just embellish everything. Um, that's not the place to, to really get any feel for, uh, in like in actuality and practical practical sense how anything is going to do on the market because everybody on there just embellishes things in both degrees whether it's for something or against something everything is just highly embellished because how many times you know this year just this year have we seen the internet say oh i'm not gonna buy this i'm not gonna support it and then it ends up being the top selling thing in in, in some category the the playstation edge controller ends up being like a top selling uh, peripheral. Uh, Red Dead Redemption, the pre-orders uh, were extremely high. Um, it's, it's gonna end up being a, a top selling game uh, when, you know, when, when the charts come out. Uh, Ho Hogwarts, we knew it was just a certain community that was upset. But my point is the internet, especially Twitter, is not a real place. And I'm not saying that any of these devices are going to sell extremely well, but I'm just saying that the internet is not a way to really understand um, and, and really base and ha have any basis of how anything is going to perform. So I don't want to hear none of that because none of these dudes who be like, oh, no, I'm, I'm not buying this. Nobody's going to buy this. Y'all don't matter. Clearly that the year has shown that evidence has shown that people were outraged about $70 games. Games are, are still selling extremely well, more than ever before. So. It's 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 all it's all bullshit and nonsense from outrage merchants. Um, it's 1080p, uh, 60 frames, eight inch L LCD screen. Nothing <clears throat> on, on this is going to be native, right? That's why it's called PlayStation Portal. Once again, um, you cannot play games that are streamed through PlayStation Plus Premium Cloud streaming. So if you subscribe to that PlayStation PlayStation Plus tier, you can't play any of the games that you uh, can play on your PS5 um, through cloud streaming. This is a remote play device. Nothing is running natively on this device. Whatever is on your 
PlayStation, essentially, is just being sent to this device. And that's it, right? It's, it's literally just your, your PlayStation console running on this, on this eight, eight inch screen. So everything is contingent upon your PS5. So one thing that is, is weird about it is that there's no Bluetooth. I, I question that decision. They, there's no Bluetooth, but they've added this um, feature called PlayStation Link, which allows you to link different audio devices with like the audio devices there. Uh, they, they've just announced uh, the PlayStation earbuds, um, the PlayStation Pulse uh, wireless headset, um, and the Explore wireless earbuds. It's, it's a strange decision. It, it, I'm not saying it's the same thing, but it kind of reminds me how um, PlayStation forced Vita users to, uh, didn't they force Vita users, you know, like I said, I don't give a fuck about Vita, so they forced v Vita users to use uh, their proprietary memory cards, it was? Yeah, that shit. And that definitely backfired. Not saying Bluetooth is on the same level as that, but this essentially increases the price, um, the amount of money you have to spend with the, uh, with, with, uh, uh, with the portal, because you're going to want to use it with a headset, earbuds, or something like that. So on top of the, the $200, then the earbuds uh, and the headset are like $200 and $150 respectively. So that was, that's a bit of an odd choice. I'm not sure why they did that, you know. Um, and and the, the PS Link will support third-party uh, headsets further down the line. So um, I have no real, and I'm going to read some of what this this stuff says. Now, I have no real interest in this stuff i'm not like a in the in the portal specifically the, the, the earbuds i think that's the only thing i'll probably get um i do have some other earbuds uh by i think razor and by logitech the reason i have earbuds is because sometimes when i'm gaming i do actually get tired of having like even though they're very comfortable headsets on my on my head you know sometimes even the one the, the one with the breathable material sometimes you still sweat long gaming sessions you just get tired of having that on your head so sometimes i wear my my razor uh gaming earbuds <clears throat> and i think i have some logitech ones i have both of those so i think it's a good idea for them to come out with wireless earbuds um especially with the you know games as a service multiplayer uh initiative that they're coming out with i think it i think it makes sense let me just say that i actually like the design i've said this before i like the design of the portal I like that it's essentially just a dual sense controller chopped in half with an eight inch screen in the middle. The reason why I like it, and I think it's, I think my, my opinion on, on it is unpopular. I know it looks weird and unconventional because that's typically not the, that's not the, I guess the, the strategy of design that they usually go, that they, that, you know, um, hardware design is usually go with when they're making a handheld device. but I don't like handheld devices. So that's why I think I like this, right? One of the reasons I don't like handheld devices is to me, um, at least newer handheld devices, to me, they're uncomfortable. Like for example, I tried the Steam Deck. The Steam Deck is probably one of the most uncomfortable devices I've ever used. Um, <clears throat> I, the last handheld device I had for a long time and that I kept was, um, was the Game Boy Advance. Um, I had uh, I had a PSP, but I sold that in like a few months. That and that was when I was much younger. Whenever the PSP came out, never bought a Vita because by that time my interest in handhelds I had like zero interest in handhelds. I do have, of course, a uh, a Nintendo Switch, but I play like all my Nintendo Switch games docked and on a TV. So I just don't like handheld gaming, and I don't like don't like handheld handheld devices. So but what actually interests me, and I'm not saying I'm buying this, but I'm, I'm really interesting in just, interested in just holding it and trying it out to see, does this feel like you're just holding a dual sense controller? Because if it actually just feels like that, then I think that's amazing because that's one of the problems I have with handhelds, handheld devices is they're uncomfortable. And I've always said, if you can make a handheld device just feel like I'm just holding a regular controller. That's amazing to me. That that's 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 just it's to me. It's so smart 
and like I don't know why like that that design all handhelds aren't built around that design but I don't know like I feel like that's an unpopular opinion right some people I guess are comfortable with how how handhelds are made I'm not I'm I like how a controller is designed right I don't want to feel like I'm holding a, a handheld I want to feel like I'm just holding a controller like how a con when you hold a controller and use a controller that you're com you're comfortable with it just becomes an extension of you you don't even realize you're holding it sometimes you're looking at the screen you don't even think that you're holding a controller a lot of times when i'm using these handhelds it's it's just a very conscious thing that i'm holding and ha holding a handheld and i don't like that about it so i like that that this is literally just a controller chopped in half and attached to to a screen i think that's just ingenious so i like the design of course you you can leave your home and use it but you still will need like some type of reliable uh you know connection um obviously your home connection and then the connection of where you're at needs to be solid because you know latency plays a part that that will affect your video and audio experience that's why to me all this cloud remote play nonsense i'm not for it nothing will ever beat just natively p playing a game on the actual device that it's running on so i've never been you know a, a proponent of any of this stuff that's everything about the PlayStation Portal remote play, but it, it's, it definitely has a use for, um, certain, for certain people. But out, outside of the house, which I don't even know if this is like small enough to really be considered portable. I don't know. Um, even though I think most handheld devices you can't really put in your pocket anymore. I think that like need for a handheld device to be something that fits in your pocket, I think that died a while ago. Um, but still, um, Traveling with it, it doesn't seem like the most uh, easy design to travel with. I'm sure there'll be cases and all that stuff, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, that's going to be $200. Let me know what y'all y'all thoughts on on this uh, remote play, PlayStation Portable devices. So this um, Pulse Elite Wireless headset is now just in the Pulse line of headsets. And I'm not sure what the big difference is between... Uh, this model and uh, this model, but um, what they do highlight in the bullet point is they say uh, Pulse Elite is our new wireless headset that offers lossless audio and comes with a retractable boom mic um, and AI noise rejection capability of filtering background sounds. A charging hanger is also included with the product for convenient uh, charging and storage options. Pulse uh, Pulse Explore, these are the head uh, um, the earbuds. Is our new is our first set of wireless earbuds providing a premium portable audio experience with dual microphones and AI enhanced noise rejection capable of filtering background sounds. Also has lossless audio and comes with a charging case. Um, what I did find weird, so the Pulse Elite, so the Pulse Elite are going to be $149 USD. That's the headset. The Pulse Explore, which are the earbuds, are 200 So the earbuds cost more than the headset. That's a little bit weird. I imagine the only reason that could be is because this is kind of like just another variation of uh, the Pulse headsets. And these are like com a completely new thing, new design. That's because... You, you would think like the headset should cost more than the, the earbuds. I would assume so in most cases. So and then they go on to talk about PlayStation Link because as, as I said, it doesn't have Bluetooth and all, and all that stuff. Um, and they go into that there. Um, and of course, you know, with the asterisk, they need you to know this. Haptic feedback and adaptive, tr adaptive uh, trigger features are only available when those features are supported by the game that is being played. Requires broadband internet Wi-Fi with at least 5 megabits uh, per second for use. Um, for better uh, play experience, a high-speed connection of at least 15 is recommended. So that's very important um, that, they, that they put that there. Because people need to know that their experience uh, experiences may vary. Your mileage may vary. So yeah, that's uh, pretty much everything ab about this, about these devices. Um, like I said, I'll probably definitely get the uh, you know the Explore wireless earbuds um, for when I don't want to don't feel like using uh, you know actual over the over the head headset. The the PlayStation Portal Remote Player. I'm just interested in seeing how it feels. 
Like, does it feel like I'm just holding a dual sense? And they don't do this anymore, really. But I, it would be cool if, like, they put stations at like Best Buys and like I don't go into GameStop anymore. But like, you know, they don't really put s- stations at like stores for you to try out these things anymore, which kind of sucks because the only way for you to try it out for the most part is to buy it, which like um, you're, you're not going to buy something for that much just to, just to demo it. But I'm really interested to hear more about the comfortability and just how it feels in your hands. Pause. So, yeah, that's it. Those are my thoughts. Hit the like button. Uh, follow me on Twitter. Hit the notification bell so you can know anytime I make a video or go, go live. And uh, yeah, check out. Make sure you check out my next video um, about Gamescom opening night live. I'll catch you all on the next one. I'm out of here. Peace.